Hello and welcome to the Clarity Fiber Arts Podcast. My name is Jody, and I'm coming to you from Pennsylvania, where I live with my husband Chris and our mini dachshund Fig, who is the, who is the owner behind the toenails that you will frequently hear in many of my videos, and she's also owner of the loud mouth that you may or may not hear. She's highly distracted. She's currently looking out the window. Um, but in the spirit of the informal nature of this video, I thought I would bring little Fig on to uh, say hello to everybody. So this is Fig. She is the only remaining child in the household and she is the queen of the household. <laughs> And uh, we love her so much. And so I often reference her. Um, and so I thought it would be fun today to just sort of uh, give you a little introduction. And I have to tell you that it took about seven outtakes because I just think she looks so funny on the camera. <laughs> All right. So that's our little figgy. All right. That's it. That's your cue to go away. <laughs> so in today's episode, I wanted to keep it really informal. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the two weeks that I've spent with my new to then unspun yarn. I am knitting my husband the tamarack cardigan um, with the new to then yarn and it is my first experience knitting with that yarn. And so I thought, you know, today we would keep it really informal and I would just talk a little bit about what it's like to um, be using this yarn, some of the things that I've encountered show you a little bit um, about how it knits up. Um, it's beautiful and uh, spoiler alert, I just really love using this yarn. Um, and then I thought it would be fun to show you some of the other things that I've been up to. You can see some of them over here. Uh, and then I thought I would have a little bit of giveaway at the end of my new colorway that I have in the shop. So stick around. Uh, not sure how long it's gonna be. It may be long, maybe short. I'll try and keep it brief. I'm not really into the long podcasts. And so, um, yeah, grab a cup of something, grab your knitting, and stick around for the next portion of this video. So as I've said, I've spent the last two weeks knitting with my New to Den yarn. Uh, the New to Den unspun yarn was a yarn unfamiliar to me. Um, and so I figured that it might help some other people out to document my um, purchasing of the yarn, my use of the yarn, and my thoughts about um, knitting with unspun yarn. So in that vein I want to show you several pieces of my tamarack cardigan. I am knitting the tamarack cardigan for my husband. It is a pattern by Jared Flood. It was um, designed to be knit with Brooklyn Tweed um, which is uh, somewhat of a rustic yarn um, and so I felt it fitting and my husband actually picked out the tamarack cardigan. Um, and I will insert a picture of that uh, right here so that you can see sort of the nature of the cardigan. It is described as a smoking jacket style cardigan. Um, and I in fact agree with that um, analysis of the pattern. It does very much remind you of the smoking jacket style. Um, my husband uh, has a side hobby of writing. He is a writer. Uh, he is a physical therapist by trade, but he is a uh, also likes to write uh, fiction on the side, and so he wanted something uh, as a writing jacket. He's not a smoker; he does smoke cigars occasionally, but uh, he wanted something that he could cozy up in, hunker down, and uh, write a couple chapters of whatever he's working on currently. And so we went through Ravelry together and. Um, he picked this tamarack cardigan, which I think is so far turning out really, really cool. So enough about the pattern. Uh, the pattern does have you knit the sleeves first. And so here is the first sleeve. 
um, knit with my knitted in yarn. And so if you haven't seen previous episodes, I purchased this knitted in yarn in the colorway Silhouette. And as you can see on here, uh, it's a variegated yarn, varying colors. Um, I've been having really a lot of fun with playing around with colors. Um, the nature of this yarn in that it is very light and sort of floofy um, and very easily plied together uh, gives you, I think, so much creativity with your ability to uh, switch colors. Each plate is a little bit different, so you might get a plate with darker on the outside, uh, you know, sort of light as the next layer and then a real dark pop in there. Um, and I think as you'll see on other parts of my cardigan, it really turns out to be um, sort of cool. You can, I've seen um, pictures on Ravelry where it sort of fades from one color to the next. Uh, mine is coming out a little more, I would say, stripey, um, but it's just so cool. Like there's, it's not enough variation that it's these distinct stripes. It's sort of these fading and blending things. And if you really want to get into it, you can easily just break this yarn uh, at the color section that it's at, wind off a ball, or as I'll show you later, um, I wind it onto a cone. Um, and and just sort of pull out these colors willy-nilly and and go for it according to what you um, have in your head is what you want it to look like and so this is one of the sleeves as you can see kind of right in here there's a little bit of what I was talking about um, this was the original sleeve I <clears throat> knit and so I was sort of playing around with what this yarn does but I started here at the cuff and it, as you can see the pleats that I, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Every time I talk about this yarn, I get a piece of fuzz in my throat, so I apologize. Um, so I started down here with the lighter portion of the plate. Kind of was, as I was going up, got my feel for what was going on. Hit a spot here that was a little bit darker and then um, I think I split the yarn here and I decided to try, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go for this sort of effect. And so uh, I split the yarn and pulled two plates that had varying yarns. And so I had a, a, a strand of a dark and a strand of a light and I got this really cool sort of um, highlighting um, sort of, uh, quality to the yarn oh my goodness now I have a fuzz in my mouth um, and so it just looks like this sort of like um, undertone overtone sort of quality of light and dark that I think looks really cool and so uh, that is the first sleeve and then I went ahead and knit the second sleeve same sort of thing there with the marling of the yarn um, and then it has you work the body. The body is knit in one piece. Uh, and so I went ahead and put the body on some barber cord. And here it is. As you can see, I'll try and I'll try and hold it up here. As you can see, it does come out sort of stripey, but the striping is sort of like a um, kind of marbleized and then sort of in this area you get sort of like a lighter highlighted sort of effect and down here it, it kind of thins out a little bit the stripes and so I think it is super cool I think that um, my husband likes to dress with a bit of flair uh, he doesn't like the usual and the traditional and so I think uh, his cardigan knit in this will really fit the bill in that degree. And so um, here's the body so far. The body's knit in one piece, so it does look like super huge. But um, if you can picture it kind of wrapped around, uh, the total is about 43 inches. 
um, around and so you knit both of the sleeves and then you knit the body in one piece uh, you pick up for the neck and the button band and so I'm really really having a great time knitting with this yarn this is uh, the patterns knit on larger needles uh, calls for a 10 I'm knitting on a 9 um, but this thing is flying this is uh, two sleeves so the sleeve I just showed you and uh, this particular piece is two weeks worth of knitting and so I love it um, and just wanted to mention I'm not sure you know what uh, people are familiar with when they um, watch this channel and so I always try and treat things like I'm addressing a various group of knitters from potentially beginner to beyond and so I'm just going to take the opportunity when I can to kind of introduce you to some things that are new to me. Um, so this pink stuff that I have on here is called knitting barber cord. I had never heard of knitting barber cord before until I attended, again, a knit night um, at my local yarn store at Lancaster Yarn Shop. Um, and all the women, most of many of the women there, had their knitting on these barber cords. So the way that I saw it was that they held their, they held their sleeves, just tied a piece off, almost like a piece of waist yarn. Um, and then they, when they were ready and time to put your needles back, back on here and start knitting again, uh, I'll show you how they work. And so it comes in a little tin like this, um, and that's what it is called. It's called knitting barber cord. You can get it all over the place, usually at um, shops that yarn shops that carry notions and things like that. And so that's the knitting barber cord. And what you do is you, I'm gonna try and separate here. So the barber cord goes into your knitting needle like so, as you can see, and it's really sort of tight. So pay attention to this area here. When I pull on that, that thing is not coming off. It's sort of, um, it sort of suctions onto there. <laughs> and uh, I feel pretty safe with it, uh, handling my, um, knitted garment and not worrying about things. But then what you do is you put it on your needle tips and you slide your stitches off onto this cord. And so it gives you this great ability to sort of, number one, stretch out your knitting. Um, if you are, this is knit in, uh, in pieces, and, but if you're knitting in the round, this extra ability to stretch out those stitches gives you the opportunity to um, try on your garments, which I admittedly don't do and I admittedly have gotten burned by that in the past. And so um, the discovery of these great little things, um, inexpensive little uh, notions that are used for knitting was really a great uh, discovery for me. And so, yeah, just wanted to mention that that is the knitting barber cord. I have tons of these. Um, you know, you kind of pre-cut them and I reuse them over and over again. So really a cool uh, little notion. Again, I may be speaking to the choir here, but they were new to me. <laughs> so, And then while I was showing you uh, my piece here, I uh, just had to show you and tell you, because this is so me, I had to show you my little, my little, spider stitch marker and give you a little funny story so I was at Joanne Fabrics looking for something else completely walked by the sections with the little jewelry uh, charms <laughs> I saw this little spider and with his little jewels on I felt like I just had to have him and I had and he had to be hanging on my Tamarack cardigan here and so um, I purchased the pack that had him on it <laughs> and I purchased all the things to turn him into a stitch marker and so um, I just found it funny because that's that's just my personality that's what I do I was totally there for something else and got completely sidetracked in the jewelry aisle with this little guy by this little guy and bought a set of needle nose pliers and some uh, 
lobster claw clasps and uh, turn them into a stitch marker. And so, yeah, that's what I do. So anyway, I digress. Back to the Newton yarn. Um, if you watch a previous episode, I talked all about how I acquired this yarn and I tried to give you a little bit of a demonstration as to the properties of the yarn uh, and talked a lot about um, the fears that I had about knitting with a yarn that initially felt to me very delicate uh, and, and that it, I may have trouble with uh, breakage as I was going. And while I cannot say that I have not had breakage in the knitting of this project thus far, um, I will tell you that I've developed over the two weeks a comfort with this yarn. Uh, the fear's gone away and I've actually embraced all the qualities of this very, um, you know, diverse yarn, I would call it, um, because there's so many things that you can do and it's just been really kind of fun. I just have embraced the versatility. I've embraced the ability to kind of stop and start with the variegation in this yarn and, and kind of add and, and put things in as I felt I wanted to. And so um, just as a bit of a recap, I will show you, let me put this away. I'll show you again the strands of yarn as they, uh-oh, I'm gonna, there's the end. As they sort of come off the plates, very, um, very floofy, very delicate. And again, if you kind of hold far apart and pull, it sort of pulls apart. Now, initially, this scared me to death. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be breaking yarn all the time. Uh, what am I going to do? This is going to be a hassle. And here I am knitting this massive cardigan for my husband in moss stitch, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but the entire cardigan is moss stitch. And so um, that came into play as well because whether or not you're familiar with moss stitch, uh, it is a knit one. It is a four row repeat, knit one, purl one, um, sort of a pattern. And so you are manipulating yarn um, a lot. And so <laughs> the combination of this floofy stuff and this knit one purl one that you have to be um, manipulating all the time was a little intimidating, but I, um, I chugged on <laughs> and I learned um, because I, I really enjoy things like that. I really enjoy sort of hacking, for lack of a better word, um, or figuring things out. And, and so there was a lot that I figured out with this yarn. So first of all, uh, one of the first things that I wanted to say was that I, I knit both English and Continental. Uh, and the reason being for that is that I have a left um, arthritic painful thumb that does not have a lot of cartilage left in it. And so uh, this joint here sort of slips around a little bit. And if I'm doing a lot of Continental knitting, uh, um, this thumb gets a little wonky and eventually probably after about 45 minutes or so um, starts to get really painful and so I apologize for the sun I'm just seeing that now um, so I'm gonna just lean forward a little bit here maybe I'll push the camera back a little sorry this is gonna shake I don't know if I should do that or not okay so um, yeah so I really wanted to having to knit knit pearl, knit pearl, uh, it's way easier for me to do as a continental knitter than as a thrower. And so it was my hope to really um, kind of knit continental through this whole thing. And so unfortunately though, I have a comfort with knitting English in where I feel more secure in holding the yarn with the English me method. And so on that first sleeve, I was all over the place. I was knitting English. I was knitting Continental. I felt way better with tensioning my yarn um, English, but I um, I wanted to knit Continental because of the nature of the patterning of the stitches. And so um, I flipped all around and back and forth, and then 
I just started to sit and think about what I really was experiencing as I was knitting the yarn. I had a lot of trouble with breakage because I was trying to figure out my tension, um, figure out a way that this um, cardigan with this combination of yarn uh, was not going to take me 700 years to, <laughs> to knit. And so um, basically what it came down to is I changed the way that I tension my yarn continental in my left hand. Uh, and so this yarn does have a delicate nature. I, there is no way around it. I watched several videos um, of knitters and some people knit with it and say they'll never knit with it again. <laughs> and other people say they love it. Uh, it's all kind of a matter of preference. And so uh, what I did, and I'm gonna insert a little video here. I had my husband take video of me uh, knitting with this yarn. And it's a little bit exaggerated because I wanted to show you how I tension the yarn. But in my opinion, the way that you tension this yarn is everything. It is the key to being able to happily and comfortably knit with this yarn. Honestly, I feel like once I got on to the way I tension this, I was off to the races. And by the second sleeve, I was able to fly on these um, stitches and with this yarn. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So basically, here's what I did. I'm going to insert a video here to show you, but I'm also going to talk about um, what I do. So both English and Continental, what I typically do is, as a lot of knitters do, I hook the yarn with my pinky finger. So I come in, scoop the yarn, and then I bring the yarn under, uh, or I'm sorry, over my index finger. And so English or Continental, that tends to be the way that I prefer to hold my yarn. And so when I, when I went Continental, I did the same thing. Hook with my finger and sort of tension the yarn this way. And what I found with this yarn is that um, it was pretty difficult for me. I kept breaking it. Uh, and depending on how the stitches would go, wow, I'm gonna stop the video and fix this sun. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. I have a, uh, I live in a home that has a loft and there's an upper window up there that is really hard to control the sun. Um, however, it's sort of like a double-edged sword because it also provides really beautiful uh, light uh, to film. And so <clears throat> I find it the best spot to film, but also kind of annoying because the sun sort of comes in and out. So anyway, Back to this yarn and how I tension it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I discovered that if I do not um, go with the hook around the pinky, uh, the hook around the pinky sort of, it was a little bit too much tension for this yarn, even double-stranded. Uh, and I don't know. I think it has a lot to do with uh, the property of this yarn uh, that I spoke about in my last video in the sense that um, because of how the fibers are running uh, the staple length of the um, The wool you are able to I mean look at that. That's that's like I can pull that really hard but once you get out here and you bring your hands apart, now you're not pulling on the same fiber you're pulling on different fibers and they just sort of poof apart. And so the distance between <clears throat> tensioning the yarn through my pinky and then over my index finger was a lot of distance there. And so if for one reason or another in my knitting, this tension right in through here would become higher because I was trying to pull through a certain stitch or I was trying to do like a slip slip knit, something that where you might have to tension uh, your yarn or inadvertently, you know, the tension would increase just because of one, all the reasons why, why your tension increases. Um, I found that the yarn would split like right in here, even holding the yarn double stranded. And so um, <clears throat> once I got on to just tensioning the yarn, through my um, my ring finger and the, the other problem I had is that 
I always had to remove my um, engagement and wedding band because it was um, catching in the yarn all the time. So I would move it over to this side. And as I'm seeing on the video, I never put it back on. So I've been an um, unwed woman for the past couple of days. Uh, so yeah, I tension it on my fourth finger there and then just under my my uh, second finger and then just over my index finger and that's all I do and that's all you have to do with this yarn um, when you do work double stranded obviously the the um, integrity of the yarn becomes stronger and so really you don't have to worry about it and this is the point in time where all my fear of knitting with this yarn kind of went out the door things just got really easy and I could really fly with my knitting too um, because I didn't have to worry about it and so that's when my love affair really began and I started uh, really enjoying my work with this yarn. I start, started separating the yarn kind of uh, on a whim and changing from like a, lar a light tone to a darker tone, stuff of that nature. And so, um, yeah, it's been ever since then really, really great. And so <clears throat> you can see that Oh, and see there, I just did it. I stepped on it. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's my cue to talk talk about <clears throat> what the other things that I found. And so, just building upon the delicate nature, I have found that um, obviously this is not does not have the um, strength, for lack of a better word, that a that a spun yarn has. And so. Basically, a good way to describe it would be you can't really like kind of throw your knitting around like you would kind of get up, get a bag of chips, get a soda, whatever, come back, pick it up. Uh, you got to be aware of the properties of the yarn and know where it's at at all times. Just in <laughs> picking up this sleeve, I had uh, my foot underneath part of the yarn and it tore just like that. And so... Um, you sort of always, and you get very used to that too, I have to say. Um, you sort of always know where these strands are and um, manage your body a little delicately around it so that it doesn't get wrapped around your knee, um, things like that. I found that as I, as my piece got bigger, uh, you know, the bit, the large body piece that I showed you here, um, the yarn then would lay across itself like this and sort of uh, just in that moment if there was a little bit of pressure uh, it would it would grab onto itself and so there is a bit of yarn management I don't mind it because I think the um, the outcome is just so beautiful and so this is a moss stitch uh, pattern and you can see that it's a really rustic yarn, kind of a fuzzy, it has a definite halo to it. Um, but this is the exact look I was going for. And in combination with the uh, smoking jacket style of the Tamarack, it's been really fun and really just a dream to work with. And I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say about this yarn. I really love it. I would recommend it. If you're a person who gets easily frustrated, this may not be the yarn for you. Um, but if you like a challenge and you like to knit with new things and you like to figure things out, um, this would definitely be something that you should venture into and try. Um, I like those sorts of things and so I had a good time and I hope that the tips that I've given you maybe uh, save you from some of that frustration that I have experienced. So yeah, just uh, you know, manage your yarn a little bit, fiddle around with your tension and you should be good to go. So I have a goal of completing the Tamarack um, in about a week and a half. I'm about midway up the body portion. I'm starting to decrease. And so that's pretty exciting. Um, and then I have to pick up for the neckband and we should be good to go. My husband is a huge Civil War buff. And so he would like to purchase some, 
Civil War replica buttons for this cardigan. Um, it is his cardigan, and so he can do what he pleases. <laughs> And so we live about an hour from Gettysburg Battlefield, and any excuse to visit Gettysburg is a good excuse in his book. And so um, probably next weekend or so, we will be visiting the battlefield and going on a hunt for replica and or, you know, antique uh, battlefield buttons. And so... That'll be my last hurdle to cross with this uh, cardigan. I'm not really sure. I'll have to kind of do some research on how to sew those types of things on. Um, I think that this yarn will tolerate a heavier style button. Um, however, again, I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, maybe I'll do a little, uh, I'll have him do a little guest appearance on here in his cardigan when I finish. So that's it about the New to Den yarn. Uh, if you've knit with New to Den yarn, I would love to hear your experience. I would love to hear whether or not those tips and tricks sort of help you out with the way you tension your yarn. Uh, and I would love to hear whether or not you are hoping to or going to knit again with the New to Den yarn. That being said, uh, I do have, I spoke about this in the last uh, video about this yarn, I ordered a ton. I was not sure how to gauge how much I needed and so um, I knew I needed at least 500 grams and so I took a risk and I ordered two quantities of 500 grams. It is looking to me like I may use one or two plates more of this yarn to finish up, but I will likely have at least 400 grams left over. And so I wanted to get your opinion on some of the things, some of the plans that I had for this um, yarn. I know that I want to make a shawl out of this yarn. I love shawls in the winter. And uh, just in working with this yarn, it feels so uh, warm and light to me that I knew it would be the perfect opportunity to get into my 52 Weeks of Shawls book, which I purchased last year uh, and have yet to knit um, a shawl out of this book. And so I picked three patterns that I really love, and it would be awesome to get your opinion about these shawls and what you think would look best just based on what I've shown you and the rustic nature of the yarn. I am not opposed now that I have a comfort level to working with one strand of this yarn and so that'll stretch things further too. Most of the patterns that I have chosen are uh, fingering weight patterns and so that will require me to hold one strand of yarn and I really feel like, again, it'll be more of a learning curve. I may have to readjust things and learn, but I really think that that's kind of what makes things fun in the knitting world and on a knitting journey. If you knit with the same kind of yarn all the time and do the same thing, uh, you'll never grow. And I'm all about growing. So yeah, that's my plan. So let me go ahead and show you the three patterns. Um, this is the... 52 weeks of shawls. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. There is a 52 weeks of socks as well. And so um, the photography, I mean, I often just browse this book and look at all the beautiful shawls. And so, goodness, I, I'm not even going to attempt to um, pronounce these. Fru Alstad is the first uh, one that I am going to cover up the pattern here and just kind of show you the picture. And so there's the picture. It is a triangular shaped shawl right there. That's the shape. Um, it's knit in gray, so you can kind of see what it's like in gray. Uh, it just sort of looks like she is all sort of wrapped up in that in that shawl and so um, that I was drawn to that immediately I love just sort of throwing on a triangular shawl and and doing whatever um, with it and kind of cozying up in that so that's pattern number one 
as a choice. Pattern number two, I have all these marked, is actually not a shawl at all. It is a scarf. Now, I will tell you, I have not knit many scarves since I initially learned to knit. Um, but the appeal of this one is kind of cool. It sort of has a twisted cable to it and hence the name. It is called the Cherry Twist. And that is it right there. See how it kind of, the cables sort of create a twisted pattern. And I think that would be super cool. Um, the marling of the Newton and yarn would sort of give that uh, an even nicer effect. I don't think it's enough marling that it's gonna hide the cables in this shawl, I mean in this scarf, um, but I think it would just make it super cool and you can kind of wrap it around multiple times. And so that's um, pattern number two that's in the vote. And then something different um, that I have really nothing like, but I can tell you the appeal of the turtleneck just um, is so enticing to me. I love turtlenecks. I'm in turtlenecks from the time it gets chilly <laughs> until almost June when the weather starts to warm up around here. I just love the feel of something warm around your neck. And so um, this is called the Everyday Collar and it's literally just kind of a collar with a front panel. And so I'm going to admit to you that I don't know how often I would use something like this, but I'm thinking like, if you know you're going somewhere outside, uh, something like this under a coat would be kind of cool. Or, you know, I'm not really sure. I'm also not sure if I'm in love with it, but you know, that's again how you sort of learn um, what you like and what you don't like it it reminds me of um, you know when we went with my daughter-in-law to look for wedding dresses we were just like you know try everything on try different styles and you never know what you're gonna love I've you know I've been knitting so long that I have a preference for certain things and definitely you know like collared things things up around your neck turtlenecky style things um, are what I tend to love. So those are the three. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to know if any of you have knit any of these patterns in this book and what your thoughts were. Um, and so, yeah, I think that I will um, include this in the giveaway that I'm going to do at the end of this episode. I would like to use the... Um, submission items into the giveaway as your comments and feedback on the three patterns. All right, so speaking of the giveaway, let's talk about that now. I would like to, I, you know, I am the dyer behind Clarity Fiber Arts, and so I have a new colorway in my shop. And here it is. I should hold up three skeins of it. Okay, so here is the new colorway. This is called Cowgirl, and it's got shades of baby blue. It's got um, some brown in there, and it also definitely has some speckling uh, going on throughout. And this is a new colorway in the Clarity Fiber Arts Etsy shop. It's a fall colorway. And when I was dyeing and skeining it up, I just thought it reminded me of like something you would see, like a, a, like a vest made out of, like a, like a Western vest. It's got all those Western sort of colors. And then the speckling sort of reminded me of like, um, some sort of a speckling you would see on a horse or, or a cow. And so I thought cowgirl was an appropriate name. I had a totally different name for this yarn. It's so funny. I, I tend to dye things from inspiration photos and I have a owl picture that I have here in the house. And, um, 
and the inspiration for the colors were from that owl picture. But as I was dying and skiing it, skiing it up, it just spoke to me and it said, I'm cowgirl, I'm not, you know, barn owl or whatever I was going to name it. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that's cowgirl. This is 100% uh, merino. This is not, I, I made a boo-boo. <laughs> my last, I, well, I won't call it a boo-boo, a happy mistake. Uh, my last order from my supplier, I accidentally clicked on the wrong yarn. And so this is 100% merino um, yarn. Uh, it is not the typical sock yarn that I buy. However, uh, I buy things with nylon to crank my socks through my machine. And so I had two, I had two boxes of this yarn. I had 20 skeins of this yarn and so rather than send it back and go through all the hassle I decided that I would dye up this base and do other things with it. Um, without the nylon in it, the socks that I crank would not be quite as strong or quite as um, clingy to your foot and so um, I didn't kind of want to go that way with the yarn and so I decided to, to do other things with this yarn which leads me to my next little show and tell which is another item that is new to the shop so this is cowgirl knit up um, I decided to pump out a bunch of these beanies um, which I can also knit on my circular sock machine and so um, a, lot of, a lot of the way that I dye yarn yields this sort of micro striping, sort of non-pooling um, yarn, which is a, a, um, a type of effect that I really appreciate. I, I kind of pride myself on the fact that a lot of my yarns in the shop have a lot of colors and yet not many of the colors included in each one sort of pool and so um, yeah these are fun to do on my circular sock machine and this is cowgirl knit up I've included a pom-pom a big fluffy gray pom-pom and a little leather tag that has a series of arrows on there and a little in for north and yeah that's that is cowgirl knit up and these are also available in my shop um, I'm going to open a section for beanies and hats because I recently learned how to do beanies and hats on my sock machine and I just think they turn out so cool so this is another variation of the beanie that I knit on my machine and another colorway um, I believe this was a one-of-a-kind colorway so I tend to um, fiddle around with colorways before I actually list them in the shop and I believe this was a skein of yarn that I had uh, just sort of fiddling around with um, a colorway but I did wind up listing this in the shop and this is called underground um, and this is how underground knits up and then I thought it would be fun to include a blue pom-pom and again the tag. So that's it for the shop update for today. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is like I said give away sorry I'm all tangled here give away a skein of the cowgirl 100% merino and in order to be eligible for the giveaway, I would love to hear your vote um, on what I should do with my Newton and yarn. And then I'm going to, um, from those entries and comments, or any comment really, let's make it any comment because honestly, I love the interaction that this channel has provided me. I love meeting new knitters and meeting new knitting friends back and forth going back and forth with questions and answers and all of it I just love the interaction of this community so much so let's make it any comment you can comment on the channel and what you like and don't like 
uh, and what you'd like to see in the future, or I would love if you would help me pick my next project with my new to in yarn. And then um, we will have this as a giveaway uh, in the next episode. All right, so that's about it for the yarny goodness. I have one more yarny goodness. <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going to talk about this in this episode or in the next one. It is probably going to wind up being a little bit of a longer episode. But I watch, as you all do, a million um, knitting podcasts. And I've heard a lot of talk about knitting for olive yarn. And so I've never knit with this yarn before. And I had uh, FOMO. <laughs> I needed to know what was so special about this yarn. And so um, my granddaughter has a first birthday coming up and I just love to knit baby knits for her. And so um, I went ahead and ordered some of this yarn. This is the um, Knitting for Olive in the colorway Merino Rose Clay. Um, and this is their 100% extra fine merino yarn. I'm going to be holding this yarn double and I'm also going to be knitting my first petite knit uh, pattern. I'm going to knit her the anchors jacket, which I will insert a photo here. Um, and petite knit is also one of those um, things that I hear constantly. I hear knitting for olive yarn and I hear petite knit uh, patterns. And so I'm gonna dive into both. I'm gonna knit a petite knit pattern with knitting for olive yarn and of course as per usual I will update you on um, on how it is going and I've stated before in uh, in previous episodes you know this I did not start this podcast to sort of self-promote my yarn if I'm going to have a podcast of course I will have a shameless plug or two for my yarn and what I'm knitting and, and the socks that I produce from my yarn, but primarily what I want to do is knit with other yarn. And so it started with the new Tidin yarn. Um, it seems like um, thing, uh, something new on the knitting scene that people were trying out and I wanted to get my hands on it as well. And same for this yarn. Uh, I hear a lot about knitting for Olive. And so uh, this week I will be casting on the anchor jacket for my granddaughter who's got a first birthday coming up. And uh, if all goes well, I only have three weeks until her birthday party, but I'm going to try and finish that little jacket. She's only a year old, so I'm going to try and finish that jacket before the party and hopefully I will have that to show you. And I will talk to you about my experiences with knitting with this yarn. Uh, I came across that yarn. I'm again. I'm not sure about you, but sometimes I have difficulty um, finding certain yarns. I had difficulty getting my hands on some drops yarn in the past. Um, uh, you know, I had to do a little bit of a research. It's not just something that sort of pops up. And so um, I had a really good. When I went to order this yarn, I had a really good. Um, experience with um, procuring this yarn from this store. It's called Fiber Space. Um, it is out of Virginia. You can kind of see all the information there. Um, but I ordered this yarn and two days later I had it. <laughs> and so that was really cool. The, the shipping was really fast um, and I would highly recommend if you are looking for some knitting for olive yarn to check out this yarn shop in Virginia. They also had a spin cycle yarn, which I am also very interested in and have never knitted with. And so that's on my radar for a next project as well. So that's called uh, Fiber Space and I will link their shop down below. I will link to everything I talk about in the description box below. And then lastly, I wanted to show a new fibery sort of rabbit hole that I have heavily fallen down. 
Uh, I've been wanting to learn needle felting forever. And uh, just this past weekend, I took a needle felting class at a local yarn shop um, with a fabulous instructor. Her name was Farron, and she can be found on Instagram as Whimsical Woolies. And she is an extremely talented fiber artist in the realm of needle felting. And she taught a class of about 10 of us. And we learned to make these adorable little pumpkins. Aren't they just so cute? And check out how it matches my, <laughs> my picture back here and some of my pillows that I have on my sofas. Uh, wasn't sure about knitting a blue pumpkin, but look how cute he is is and let me just tell you just a little bit about needle felting um you really need not be intimidated by needle felting um it, it is you know you are stabbing wool with a sharp instrument and so in that realm but i can tell you i knit this entire pumpkin and didn't stab myself once and so with the proper tools and the proper instruction uh you too can um, learn the art of needle felting, but I gotta tell you, I'm hooked. And of course, I went on to needle felting YouTube episodes and things like that. So this will not be my last felt. Um, it's it's quite. Once you get the hang of it, it's kind of fun. And again, not not super intimidating, but you can kind of sculpt with wool. I mean, my goodness, who wouldn't want to do that? Um, it's fun, it's easy to correct mistakes. It's not, you know, sort of a permanent thing. If you if you create something and you don't love it, you just pull the wool off and start over again. And so um, it's a pretty forgiving craft. Um, it doesn't look like it would be, but it really is. And just with some um, instruction on how to shape things and how to go about things, and one felting needle and a pad, you are off to the races with some um, some wool roving, a certain type of wool ro roving. And then at the very end, you get to put these little cute little curly cues on and sort of decorate with them, which is a different, a different sheep breed altogether. And so um, Farron threw all these little curly cues in the middle of the table and just let us pick. And I just found it so fun. Really, really a very cool other fibery craft yeah so that's it that's all i have to show you today i'm pretty sure i did not mention where to find me on um on the internet uh, i can be found at clarity fiber arts on instagram and facebook and also as i mentioned before i will link below my little etsy shop if you are at all interested in any of my hand cranked socks or uh, hand cranked hats things of that nature who knows maybe there'll be some needle felting in there as well so that is it for today please if you enjoy this video uh, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if the content interests interests you uh, It really helps me out. It helps me to get these videos that are quite a bit of work uh, out there to other knitters and um, Have that work sort of pay off in the in the form of you know meeting some new knitters and and having some new subscribers so if that's the case i would really appreciate a like and a subscribe and definitely a comment to win that skein of cowgirl yarn and i will see you all in the next episode hope you have a good week bye bye hello and welcome to the clarity fiber arts she looks so funny and sick.